Star Blazers is the name of the topic today, and we're going to look at building Space Battleship Yamato. Join me inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we are looking at the Space Battleship Yamato. And specifically we're looking at more of the movie version. I don't quite know which one it's from, but let's talk about Star Blazers and a really cool model. You guys can see when we get done, we are going to have a very nicely detailed space battleship with guns, turrets that even move, are movable, lots of them. So you can definitely take this model and do dioramas and different things like that. And we're going to get this guy printed and it even comes with a really nice stand. We're going to get, print this one. We're going to go find it out on the internet. We're going to take it into Kira, slice it, which this model is really nicely made. And you can even do this with a smaller printer with an Ender 3. It's cut up very well into separate pieces, a lot of small pieces, even though for this size, everything on there is FDM. Nothing is resin. You can do almost all of this printer. It's very well created, very well broken up, and very easily and ready to print, which is pretty dang awesome. So we're going to go through the steps, you're going to get to see the time lapse, and we're going to get this guy printed and get you a better look at that final product as we get to the end. So for this video, I'm using a Creality CR10 V2 to print this one. Um, I like the CR10 V2s, they're really good printers, they do a really good job. Amazon affiliate link down in the description below if you're curious about getting one as the price continues to decline on the cost of them now. So it is a really good size build plate. I do a lot of the Mandalorian helmets and stuff on that build plate and different things like that. So you can do really good size prints, really tried and true machine. I have two of the V2s and a V3 in my shop. So that's how well I like them. Uh, they do a really good job. So definitely check them out. And speaking of checking something out, if you're new here and you enjoy the content you see today, before you head out, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get all the notifications every time this happens. Feel free to join us every Tuesday at 8.15 Central Standard Time as we stream for about an hour to two hours, talking about 3D printing, talking about science fiction, all kinds of fun stuff. So definitely make sure you hit that. And before definitely before you walk out of here today, Leave a comment and hit that thumbs up button. Let me know we're doing something that you enjoy because this is a step of departure from what we usually see with Star Wars and Star Trek and all that stuff. Kind of stepping out of the bubble with this one a little bit. So definitely let me know if you guys enjoy this one. So, all right. Well, the first thing we need to do, we need to head to the computer. We're gonna head out to the internet, find the file. Then we're gonna slice it in Kira. Then we're gonna get to the print. So let's hop over to that computer. All right, guys. So. Thingiverse is the place to go today where we're going to find this model to actually get to print this one. It's a really good model. All credit for the model goes to Variable Penguin, who made a fantastic model. And not only made a fantastic model, I know looking at this you only see three files, but I said this was really broken up. Well, we're going to talk about that in a minute when we hop over and get ready for the Kira part, because you notice there's this Yamato zip. Well, all the parts broken down are in that zip folder. So definitely keep that in mind. This is very well done, broken down for even smaller printers to do, like the Ender 3, to do a really nice good size of this print if they want to, uh, because of the way it's been cut. And so the guns have been cut so they're easier to print and different things like that. So this is the model that we are gonna be working on today and that we're gonna turn into that beautiful ship you just saw in the beginning and you're gonna get a better look at here as we move to the end. So <clears throat> here's the file. Now remember the name of the game. If you're in Thingiverse and you hit that download all and it doesn't work, if you backtrack that files after that number, put a slash zip, boom, the entire thing will download for you most of the time, depending on how they upload it. Sometimes you will get a 404 page not found, but that is a neat trick to download a lot of files real quick through Thingiverse. So with that said, and the credit given, and we know where to go find the file, and this link will be in the description down below so you can go find it yourself and do your own print. And if you do one, leave in the comments down below, send me a picture, show me. So let's get over to Cura, where I will slice this one because we are printing this one with FDM this week. And uh, 
let's get a look at this one in the files. So let's hop over there. All right, guys, so I've extracted the folder. And you remember, and when I extracted it, there's this Yamato, Yamato photo in there, or file. And you gotta extract that one too. So two folders to extract. And when you extract the second one, here's the broken down pieces that I talked about. All the top stuff, the underside bridge, bridge number three, um, if we're talking about the movie, uh, the live action movie, which, you know, bridge number three doesn't have a good ending. Uh, the full model, the shield and the stand, all the pieces are here in, in here. And I'm gonna start with the hull because I did the hull in three pieces. I did it with the CR-10V2. So with that, again, as I said, I did it in three pieces. You can do it one piece at a time. These all should fit, and they're even broken down further. You saw hull A, one, parts one, two, three, and four. Uh, but with the CR-10, I have the ability to just kind of knock this out. You know, let's have fun. Let's kick this down to reality under three. And of course, we're not gonna print it that way. We're gonna print it that way. And unfortunately for the under three, it's a little too tall. So, but for the CR-10, it's not. <laughs> I love my CR-10. Uh, and while well, Ultimaker 5.0 is in beta, we're not doing that right now. That'll be a video of its own. So, I rotated it. I got it on there. Awesome. So, let's go for part B. And again, we've got some interesting detail. I'm going to rotate it. Do, 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 do. Come on, don't be that way. Don't be that way. There we go. And we are now got that on the build plate. And you can see, you know, all the bridge pieces and the guns and all that will click onto that part. So we've got that on the build plate. Awesome. So now the final hull section, which is hull section C. This guy was the trickier of the group because I want to keep where it connects to the build, where they bind together on my build plate. So I'll rotate that down. And of course, it's got to do its thing. We're going to arrange all models. And it does a nice job putting them in the center of the build plate. Now, we've got these. What are we going to do? So that little plugin called custom support. Go get it in the marketplace, it's a wonderful thing. You get this button and you can pop on supports so you know that those points will be properly supported when this model builds up. And that will give the ability for that to be printed out really well. And the way this is cut, there will not be a bunch of support that you have to go pulling out, which is a great thing. So we'll slice that one. Um, I'm using my standard settings. Um, Inland PLA Plus is what we use here. Um, my print temperature is about 215. My build plate will be anywhere from 50 to 60. So, and honestly, these are the three biggest chunks. Now, if you're doing the Ender 3, you'll have to do it smaller or scale it down and just do a smaller ship. But remember, if you scale one piece, you gotta scale them all. So, uh, the infill may be a bit high here on this one. 10%, yeah, that's not terrible. But you can see those custom supports will make sure that those points actually develop when we print. So, and that's what we want. You guys can see there's not a whole bunch of support on here. There's some additional support to help with these curves and this section here that's hollowed out that the other parts will slip into. So all in all, this is done really, really well, guys. Especially if you want something that you have to print and assemble, and you want a very big size model. So definitely an awesome one here. I'm gonna clear my build plate. And just for fun, we'll go look at hull at the hull section A that they've chopped up. And you can see he's got it cut up into four shorter halfway pieces. So done very well. 
so that way you can do this on an Ender 3 and still get the same result. So I'm going to clear my build playlist again. So we've done the main hull. Main, the main body of the ship. So now we got all the top pieces. And there's a lot. And unfortunately, this print did not come out very well. Um, I was a little disappointed. The print came out fine. The video doesn't come out very well here later on. So I do apologize about that, guys. But very easily, very clean. Um, the guns, the actual guns themselves. Um, and one of the cool things about having the mesh tools plug in is I could, if this had all been one thing, I could have gone in and separated them. But like the actual gun pieces here, um, I need more of these. So I'll go in and I'll multiply those because, you know, there's three big guns. There's two of these smaller guns. So we need to multiply those. I'll just make spare. I need more of these gun of the actual gun mounts, so I need to multiply that. And then these I need just a bunch of to put in the actual balls here that will sit up on top of that hull section B. You've got the wings that will click together to create the other sections. The bridge module is right there. So basically you've got a lot of parts that need to be printed and multiplied so you print the correct number of parts. So keep that in mind when you do this, that you're gonna to have to do a bunch of multiplying. Then you've got one more section we gotta go get. We gotta go get the underbridge. And I'll just drag them all on here, because, you know, why not? And you'll see one, two, and part three is in here as well, right there. So I did that all in one print. If you scoop this down to an Ender 3, I'm pretty sure you can do this all in one print. Yeah, you can do it all in one print. You're done. All your little peripheral pieces are done. And a lot of assembly. I've thought about printing this one again to do an assembly video. If you guys want to see that, comments down below. Let me know that is something you want to see. Because um, I'll gladly print this one again. It was a beautiful print. It was very smooth. Um, but if I do it again, I'm going to do all this in resin. I'll do the hull in FDM. But everything else, like these pieces, I would do over in resin. And I'd probably do it on my Photon Mono X. Um, or actually, honestly, I'd probably do it on my Saturn S. But we do have the Max 3 coming. So hmm, we'll keep that all in mind. But all your peripheral pieces, I used a raft. That way everything stuck to the build plate. I didn't have a bunch of little pieces. Depends on how brave you are. If you want to just do one part at a time, that is perfectly fine. And like me, say you got an Ender 3 and an Ender 2, use the Ender 2 to do all these little guns. It's a great way to do it. So always kind of keep that in mind. You've got options on how to print this. If you have any questions about printing this, definitely ask me down in the comments below. But let's head on to the print and the final product, and I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, guys, that's the print. Pretty low key, pretty straightforward. A little bit of put together time, but a very good 
clean cut, very detailed, nice model. So definitely one I'm looking forward to. I'm gonna have to do some smoothing to get rid of some lines. I may do use, use the talc and resin method to do this. I haven't decided yet. And there's some spider webbing that I need to get rid of as well. But all in all, a really fun print. And honestly, once I started figuring out how to assemble it, it was a really fun model to assemble. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before you head out of here today and that like and comments if you have any questions. I appreciate everybody and we'll see you in the next video.